Okay, welcome. Welcome to another Alt Latino Live on Instagram. I am Felix Contreras, the Alt Latino host, and we're very, very excited to be back here again uh, this week to talk to you. Uh, a couple of housekeeping issues before we bring on our guest. I want to remind you, to, you're already letting us know. Hey, Ray Chucky, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, let us know where you're watching from, okay? Let us know where in the world you're watching from. Give us your city, your state, your country. Um, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, and I do want to remind you to check out our, our, I do want to remind you to check out El Tiny's takeover of the alt of the Tiny Desk concerts. Uh, we've had amazing performances so far. We've had, um, you know, M. Alfonso from Cuba, Silvana Estrada from Mexico, lots of people. We have uh, some more people coming from Dominican Republic. We have an artist coming from Argentina. Lots of people from all over Latin America. So please don't forget to check out the El Tiny takeover of the Tiny Desk concerts. We're doing it all through the month of uh, we're doing it all through the month of uh, Hispanic Heritage Month here in the United States, and we're having a lot of fun. So wow, look at that Kuala Lumpur they're watching from Brazil, Argentina, Budapest, Hungary in the house. Thank you so much. Okay. As usual, I've got to go in here and try to find, uh, and I'm going to look for our uh, guest. Uh, hold on a second. And here she is. Okay. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you, Felix? I'm, I'm doing well. So nice to see you. Likewise, likewise. Let me switch this thing. And just for the people who are giving us our graphics, the NPR graphic, uh, I don't know, it's showing up to me as being reversed. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see what we can do about that. All right. Emerald? Emerald, Emerald to be a C. I know it's it's kind of complicated. My mom it means Esmeralda. It means um, emerald in in French. Sometimes I I, I tell my mom like, ¿Por qué no me dijiste Esmeralda? You know, you should have just named me Esmeralda. But <laughs> I I try to I try to put everything in Spanish. You know, that's yeah. just just a habit of mine. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really really excited to have you here. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. So I. Just so that we know, you know, we're going to talk to uh, we're going to talk to you about a lot of different things. But the, usually, the question I like to ask artists is like your origin story, your your yeah. artistic origin story. Like, how did you discover acting? Where did you where did that come from? Well, I'm from a really small town called Brownsville, Texas. It's oh a border no. city to Mexico to Matamoros. Shout out to anyone from Brownsville watching. <laughs> um, so that's where I grew up, a really small town. And I think just my dreams were bigger than the town that I grew up in. And um, I started off on a show called Univision, Nuestra Belleza Latina. Um, I don't know. It was kind of just like, it, it was really interesting because this, this show, um, whether it was a competition, but it kind of showed me a lot about female friendship and sisterhood and and how latinos and latinas just really have to unite and then from there you know it was like you know a weekly course of like you know challenges and stuff and we got into like acting and i really enjoyed like this thing called acting how i can like interpret all these different characters and and give a voice to to to, to so many different types of people that aren't me right because i'm just like so i you know i'm only so much but with these characters i can be much more and then that's kind of how I started in Miami. Then I decided to leave all that behind and um, do the big crossover to Los Angeles. And here I am today. Still still a long road to go, but happy, uh, happy where I am today. That's one of the great things I like about doing these interviews is that we're catching, like we had two actors on last week, uh, and we're catching you guys, uh, like, not the beginning of your careers, but at a point where you've already started and you're being very particular and picky about the, the roles and, and projects that you choose and all of that. We can just like, we can keep note of that and then watch your career grow and flourish as time goes on. So this is an exciting, I think this is an exciting part of your careers because you just, you have no idea what's in front of you, all the great things that are going to happen for you. And 
and how you, your growth as an actor will just completely just blossom. Yeah, so the- I feel as actors, we never stop learning. You know, there's always, you always want to just find different, different ways to like dig deep, deep, deeper into your craft. So um, it's, it's a really, really exciting, but very challenging um, <laughs> career. You, 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 you just, you gave us a thumbnail of, of all the things that, you know, that you've done from starting in Brownsville and Miami and LA, but along the way, there were a lot of different things, a lot of people who have influenced you. But in particular, were there any like uh, actors, acting teachers, acting coaches that helped you really de- devote yourself to your craft? Yeah, I mean, there was, there's so many. Um, well, just in general, I feel like I felt very lucky within the household that I grew up. So I would have to start with like my mom because she was, she's definitely an inspiration and someone that always taught me to keep going and to thrive and to, even though there's going to be many, you know, blocks in the road, you have to just keep going and always be your authentic self, which is very important to me. So that's like my, my biggest um, inspiration throughout my entire um, career. Um, But other than that, so many people, I remember Salma Hayek being one of, you know, pioneers in, in, in what I remember. Like I, I, I think I started off wanting to be a model and I was like, oh, but there isn't models that look like me. You know, I'm curvy and I'm short. And then I would see Salma Hayek do all these things. And I'm like, oh, I want to be like her, right? And then I remember like watching all these like classic films with my grandmother. So, you know, from Katie Jurado to Maria Felix, all these like in- incredible women, pioneers that opened the door for us. Um, and then now, then to like Rita Moreno, I mean, the, you know, we, for first Oscar to the first Latina to win an Oscar and now she's an EGOT, right? Like any, anything better than that? I mean, definitely someone I was, I had the pleasure to, um, meeting her for the first time at the, the variety, uh, power of women. Um, uh, I was there with Gloria Calderon Kellett, which is a showrunner of my new show with love. And she presented Rita Moreno with the award power of women and and it was just incredible to see this amazing lady that paved the way for girls like me that have dreams to see to see myself on tv um and then anywhere from like Shakira to Jennifer Lopez you know these 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 girls do just amazing stuff that make us feel empowered and and just happy to be be, you know a woman and female power I, I I love that. I love hearing that. I love how you find like, you find the, the the role models for yourself, and and some actors and actresses and actresses in particular that you know the wider society may overlook, right? But they're important to us. I mean, yeah. I'm not an actor. Uh, I've never dreamed of being an actor, but I love to go to movies. I love to watch stuff on television, and anytime I've seen someone on the air that looks like me or looks like my cousins or looks like, you know I mean? That somebody looks different. Yeah. Like, yeah. Go, go, you know, it's yeah. we need to have that, that variety. Cause I can't even imagine. Cause that, that business in is tough when it comes to representation. Yeah. And more than anything, authentic representation, I think is, is very important because when we see, you know, someone to look up to in the media, um, I just, it just gives us the opportunity to, fight for our dreams to, to think that we also can achieve that. So I do feel the media um, has done a good job, but there's still a long way to go on how we can get more accurate and um, authentic representation of us Latinos. Yeah. Well, there's a, there, there are a number of people out in my audience, you know, pulling for me. <laughs> Remember that when you're out there, okay? Thank uh, you. So let's, let's talk, let's go back a little bit. I've, I've seen a number of people already doing shout outs to shadow hunters. Yes, Shadow Hunters. So talk to us about that show and 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 your <clears throat> Let's talk to us a little bit about that. Yes. Well, um Shadow Hunters, I when I first moved to LA, I was I remember I was here for about 3 months and it was audition after audition and it was nose after nose and I was like, "Well, maybe I'm not I'm not good, you know, because I was making that big crossover from doing Spanish television and telenovelas to moving on to Hollywood." And I was like, well, maybe I just don't, don't, don't have the chops. And, um, and then Shadowhunters came along the audition and I was like, okay, um, 
I, uh, I want to also give out a big shout out to my coach, Mark Durso, that he's been by my side, always helping audition. I think he's, he's logged in watching this. So shout out to him. Um, so anyway, I decided I was, I was coaching with all these amazing, you know, coaches here in Los Angeles. And I said, no, I want to go back to my roots with the people that know me, that have been working with me since the beginning. And I decided to coach this audition, the shadow hunters audition with him. And, you know, I wanted to think of like all these different ways. I always, whoever is an actor, like I, I always try to like think of an, an advice, right? Like when you do an audition, like do it for yourself. Like don't do it for, oh, who's the producer that's going to see me or the casting director. No, do what you want to do. That way when you're sending something, it's what you want. And if you didn't get it, it's because it's the way you wanted to do it, right? So you still get fulfilled. Anyway, so I did the audition. I got a call back. I got a producer session. It's a long process. Then I got a, a, a studio uh, callback. And then finally the network, which was on back then ABC Family. Now it's Freeform. And I booked this incredible, incredible role, um, Isabel Lightwood, which to me, um, being Latina and booking a role that was not considered to be Latina you know, was, was, was a, was a groundbreaking because they usually just want to cast, you know, they box us, they always box us into these stereotypes and no, this was a superhero, half human, half angelic, and just happened that I was Latina, but it, it the, the breakdown never said we're looking for a Latina. So it just, to me, it just felt like after so much hard work, I mean, I was in acting classes, I constantly trying to learn so much. Um, to finally, you know, get this role that was to me like incredible. So, for people who haven't seen the show, mm -hmm. there are a lot of fans out there too. But, <laughs> so, for people who haven't seen the show, explain your character's role in the storyline. So, Shadow Hunters is about uh, this world that exists within our world. So, we are half human, half angelic. So, we protect the human world from the demon world. From uh, werewolves and vampires and all these creatures, these dark creatures that exist within our world, but a normal person, we would call them mundanes, don't, don't have that vision to see what's around us. So us shadow hunters would protect the people from all these evil things. So yeah, it was, it was, it was great because, um, it's a fantastic story. It's a, fa a fantasy. Um, I was, uh, my character, Isabel Lightwood, she was a badass in heels. I would fight all these demons in, you know, <laughs> stiletto shoes, which was, was, was a challenge. So I would consider myself being the baddest um, fighter of all time. So she went from uh, fighting demons with the whip to then a staff to a sword. So it was a very um, physically demanding role. Um, and um, I, I loved it. You know, I, I, it was, it was incredible. It was, I just felt like, you know, a superhero, you know, I got to wear incredible clothes and more than anything, I felt, you know, she was this incredible representation to like young females, you know, and I think she, she loved her family. She fought for the right things. And I think we need to see more girls like her on, on TV. You eventually through your role, you become a role model yourself. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and, and, and with fantasy stuff, I mean, there's always, there's always a, something to learn from it. There's always a nugget of truth, right? Because it's, even though it's based on these fantastical scenarios, you know, I think we do need people to watch over us, right? In the protection. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. always a bit of truth in those fantasy. fantasy it's really shows. nice because when the audience sees these like fantasy shows, it, you kind of like, um, you, you get yourself out of like the real world and you go into this fantasy world. But when we're touching subjects, um, harder subjects, maybe about like, you know, gender and about um, sexuality and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's kind of like an easy way into the audience to like listen and to read it without hitting you over the head with it. You know what I mean? So I think it's a very delicate way of just showing the issues we have today, but but in, in putting it in this like magical world. Very well put. Uh, you mentioned something earlier, and let's go back to it because a lot of also recognize from your world, your work in telenovelas. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we did a whole show on Latino once on the history of telenovela and mm -hmm. you know how it started and how they got started and just like the, the social and, and cultural impact of the shows. You know, some of the negative, some of the positive, uh, we try to look at it evenly. Uh, 
but it's still such a strong cultural phenomenon. It's like there almost is no equivalent in any other language. It's just like it's they're still going strong. Talk to us a little bit about how you got into that industry and mm -hmm. what and, and what were some of the challenges to make that happen? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's like anything. You just, you know, you have to keep fighting. You have to have representation. You have to audition. After so many no's, you finally get a yes. You know, that, that process is inevitable and it's going to be in every, I feel in every job opportunity that, that you're going to, that you're going to get um, along the way. But for me, um, I got, I was, I was actually hosting. I was, a, I was a TV host um, on a channel called Mundos um, and I was doing a video countdown show and, and I remember I would interview people and I was like, well, you know, I also want to get interviewed. I want to talk about my story. I feel I have so much to say and, and so much to, to learn and to say. So then I said, well, I want to try maybe like, you know, auditioning for, for novelas and stuff. And I finally did that. And I got my first role in, a, I think it was a Nickelodeon series and for Latin America. And then I did, um, Cosita Linda, and then I did Voltea Pa Que Te Enamores. It's just, it's very different. Um, you shoot, because telenovelas air every single day, well, Monday through Friday. Here in the U.S. or in the Hollywood system, series usually air once a week, or you have, like, you know, the whole set of series, which is about 10 episodes, like, in, in one release. But over there, you're shooting about 40 scenes a day. So you have to use a little earpiece so people could feed you your lines because there's no time to stop. You maybe have two takes to do a scene and then you keep going. It's multi-cam. Multi-cam means three cameras or more shooting while the whole scene is happening. Versus a series, you have one or two cameras and you have to repeat the scene several times because first they're getting your coverage, then they're getting your partner's coverage, then they're getting a, a two shot, then they're getting the wide. So it's, 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 it's very different technically, but yeah. So when I was working in telenovelas, I would have an earpiece. Um, some, some actors come in and say, Oh, I'm going to memorize the whole thing. And you know, a week in they're like, no, get me the earpiece. I, I, it's true. It's, it is, it's, 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 it's a lot of work and it just, you want to deliver um, your best performance. And sometimes you need a little help. And if that's the way that industry works and you work, you know, you just have to, uh, uh, que um, yeah. to work in, in, in that kind of an environment, you know, but, but overall, I mean, I, I had a great experience. I met so many incredible people and, and, um, but, but my dreams wanted, I wanted more. And that's why I decided to, you know, do that crossover to the Hollywood world. No, telenovelas is a, I had no idea about that, the, the earpiece in the ear. You didn't know? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that makes sense because they're doing it every day. Yeah. yeah. You know, just, just for the people watching, just a little historical note, because this is something that we covered on our show. The three camera shoot that is used in that format was developed by a Latino. It was Desi Arnaz during uh, I Love Lucy. They wow. were the ones who used the three camera shoot. And it's the one that's used today. But Desi Arnaz was, he's Cuban American. Yeah. And, but he was. Uh, not only, you know, a musical pioneer, but also a television industry pioneer. Just, you know, take notes. Yes. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of I Love Lucy. I mean, I think there that is the um, the platform to every comedy. And as a, a female, I mean, she was a pioneer for for several things. I was, I think, she was like the first head of a studio, first female head of a studio. You know, it was the first. Um, biracial couple on on camera right she was the first female to appear pregnant on television you know so many um incredible things that um that lucille ball um paved the way for women so it's it's one of my favorite shows and it, and it's crazy because it came out what 60 no. years ago and no. it's still so relevant today i mean you look at it and when you there's not a second that you don't laugh watching that show so it's so universal and 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 yet so so today i'm so glad you like that show like that yes I, so I, i've done a number of stories on it for npr uh over the years of different aspects of it. so i just because i'm just so fascinated by it so i'm so glad we share that <laughs> that yes, of course. Okay, so again, these interviews are, you know, they're very short. We're just going in and talking a few things. Uh, let's about your next role. You mentioned yes. working with a very esteemed showrunner right now. Talk yes. to us about the show and, and your experiences. Oh, with love. It's, it's such a refreshing show. It's, um, 
It's created by Gloria Calderon Kellett, um, an incredible human being. Um, she also did How I Met Your Mother. Um, she also worked on um, One Day at a Time with Rita Moreno. And now, I mean, among many other things, Gloria, if you're watching, pardon, I don't have your entire resume, but I'm sure it's <laughs> incredible. And now working um, on this new show for Amazon Prime Video, um, which, by the way, it, um, it's going to air on September, September, on December 17th, December 17th with love. Um, it's, it's a, it's a rom-com. It's, it's fresh. It's a sexy rom-com. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's a powerhouse of Latinos and, um, their stories across, uh, race and gender and all these, you know, beautiful things. But at the end of the day, we're all just looking for love. And, and I think it's, it, it's really, I can't wait for, for the audience to see, to me, a show that's never really been done about Latinos, um, showing them in a very just light and, and, and fresh way. Wow. Yeah. Good. Gloria called it on Kelly. We have, we've, I keep saying this, but we've, you know, we had her on the show uh, talking about, you know, some of her uh, accomplishments and some of the things that she's done. And it's, it's important to, to point out to people who are having those kind of uh, successes in an industry that, like, as we've said, they fight back, you know. They do. She does. She's, she's one of the good ones. She's one that wants to see everyone around her succeed. And, and she hosts these amazing Twitter uh, question, uh, Q and A's for the, the general public. So it's really nice to see that, you know, I feel time is the most valuable thing you can give to someone. And she gives that so effortlessly and, and so genuinely. And I think it's really nice to see how much she, she wants people. She doesn't even know to succeed. Right. So yeah. yeah. No, no, we're two big fans here, Gloria. <laughs> yes, Gloria, we love you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we want, I want to wrap this up because it's just very, very quick. But you did yeah. mention a uh, rom com, you weren't mentioned romance. Yeah. Of course, we have to ask, gotta ask. You're uh, married to Royce, you yeah. know. So, how do you guys manage like these two very busy careers? How does that work? Yeah, you know, I think more than anything, we, we support each other so much that it's we understand we understand each other's career but hey i mean it's it's i think people think it's harder than what it really is like i think when you're committed and you know when you love someone so much you you work it out i mean we constantly see each other we always if, if you know we're in two extremes of the country we'll like meet somewhere in the middle he'll come visit me to set i'll you know it just it just depends you know when i'm working we're we're apart at times but when when i'm not working you know we're together hanging out spending time with family family is the most important thing to us my mom and my grandma are here oh um, they're making me food all day <laughs> every day so I'm really I'm really happy about that but yeah I mean we're, we're very close to our family we're we're very private we, we love you know to spend time together and to really be present with one another have you had a chance to see his tiny desk uh, I haven't seen it but as soon as you guys posted as soon as you guys posted on um, my I guess my photo, he immediately sent it to me and to make sure, you know, that I was posting and reposting. So definitely support. No, I haven't seen it. I, I'm, pre I'm preparing for your questions, Felix, <laughs> you know? So yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm I mean, I'm sure I'm, I'm a huge fan of his new single, Lao Lao. Um, I can't stop listening to it. So, and I, and I heard it, it's, I think it's been out for about a month, but I heard it like, last year so so um i'm i'm really excited for his for his music yeah well you know it's it's very exciting it, it's, i think again looking at it from my perspective you know somebody who's been around for a while i just love seeing so the creatives like this you guys are, are it's very positive you have a positive image you're putting out a positive message family love support mm -hmm. you know yeah. and everything that you do and I think that, you know, we need more of that in, in the world in general, but specifically among the Latino community. Absolutely. And understand, you know, who we are, who we really are. And we have, we have people like you and other actors and then, you know, French Roy Stewart's music to, for people to understand who we are, what we stand for, and all the things that are important to us. So thank you so much. Everard. Thank you so much for being here with us. We're really excited to have you and wish you the best of luck. We're going to be watching. Can't wait to see this show because I'm a huge fan of everything that Gloria Calderon does. Yes, so exciting. December yeah. 17th with love on Amazon Prime Video. I can't wait for all of you guys to watch. And thank you, Felix, so much for having me. It's, it's always really nice to just have the opportunity to um, just speak a little bit about myself and hopefully I can inspire young girls who are maybe in Brownsville or any small town to just, you know, fight for your dreams and stay true to who you are and... Um, 
and, and work, work, work hard. I always want to, the advice that I give is like, it's, you have to just, you know, um, be very, you have to know where, where you go, where you want to go. You have to know where your end goal is to know how to get there. So as long as you have that, the, the path is just going to be there waiting for you. So keep working hard and um, it's not always going to be easy, but keep fighting. There you go. Thank you for that, though, man. Thank you for that message. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. My best to everybody back there. And everybody watching, remember, watch our Tiny Desk concerts. We're taking Tiny Takes Over Tiny Desk for all of Hispanic Heritage Month. Prince Royce is coming up. I think it already posted, but it's coming up. And we have three more to go after that. Uh, lots of great music. We're going to have another interview next week. So please stay, to uh, stay tuned, stay posted, do whatever you need to do. Uh, the whole social media world is a different way to interact. So, uh, but thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and um, I think that's it. I was supposed to say something else, but I can't remember. So <laughs> there you go. That's okay. All right. Thanks. Nice to talk to you. Bye. Hey, everybody. Bye. Bye.